Hello boys and girls. In this video we are going to talk about bijections and actually an infinite number of bijections for example between the set of natural numbers and the set of pairs of natural numbers but we are not going to stop there we are actually also going to look at bijections between the natural numbers and the set of all finite lists of natural numbers and we're going to see actually how that works in just about a minute. Um, mostly I'm going to go through the implementations that are given in this paper. In the video in the last week I told you I'm going to look at papers on hereditary finite sets by Paul Tarau. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, this is a Romanian guy uh, working in North Texas. I'm going to say something about him in a second as well. In this paper, we're going to look at the first three pages, really. He has some Haskell implementations. Um, I basically want to want translate it to the scripting language, Python. Um, but these algorithms are so easy that the language basically doesn't matter much. Um, so let me actually spoiler right away how some of it work, so make it interesting. I'm having here the, the file that I will execute. Um, I uncomment uh, comment here, which is just the the basic, like the gist of of how the the main pairing work and how the, this trick works. So, um, by the way, I get a beer or a nice tea, you know, chill. It's probably going to take, if I have to take a guess, 40 minutes this video. So, given any natural number, uh, it happens to be the case that using the fundamental theorem of, of uh, arithmetic, basically, that we can, in a sense, split the any natural number n in two parts, and even in an uneven part, and it looks like that. The first observation is uh, any natural number is divisible by two a particular number of times. So, for example, the number 8 happens to be 2 to the power 3. So given 8, we can divide it by 2 3 times and then we are at 1. Or the number 10, which happens to be 2 times 5, is divisible by 2 once and then we are at 5 and 5 is an uneven number which is not divisible by 2. So the, there is this, this even part which is basically a power of 2 where the power denotes how often it is divisible by 2. Right, so any n has this representation 2 to the power of x, x any number, any natural number, um, including 0. And if we take n and, and divide out all factors of 2, then we are left with something which is not divisible by 2 by definition, so it has some uneven number, right? Uh, and any uneven number has the representation 2 times any number plus 1, right? Um, course if you subtract from the uneven number one then we are left at an even number again so for example we started with the example 10 is divisible by two once then we had five if we subtract from five one then we had four and we have an even number which is again divisible by two right so in that sense any number n can be uh, split into an even and an odd part and the funny thing is that both of those are parameterized by this x and y's, and y can be arbitrary uh, natural numbers again. So any any pair of natural numbers x and y um, going in the other direction, you can multiply them in this sense, and then you are here uh, at a natural number n by the fundamental theorem then of arithmetic, any number has this unique uh, representations into factors, and so we have already here, <laughs> we are at the start of the video, and the, the, this is already the, the major uh, clue. Um, we have a projection between the natural numbers and pairs of natural numbers. And this is not the only way uh, of, um, of uh, getting a projection in this way. We are going to quickly mention uh, some that, that don't evolve exponential functions, for example. And also I use the number two here but um, this is also not really fundamental because we could have also said, hey, actually any number is divisible by seven a particular amount of times. 
um, and then the same spiel would again work. And this is also the way in which we are going to get a family of bijections. Okay, so uh, just to, to hit, uh, like have that hit home, um, some short examples, okay? And then we're also going to see how this will uh, generalize to lists. So um, given some number here, I took uh, 480. Uh, this happens to be 32 times 15. You know, this is an uneven number. This is the even number. And this is a power of two, namely this uh, 32 is, is all the uh, twos, <laughs> it contains all the twos that this number is divisible by, namely this is two to the power of five times 15 or two to the power of uh, five. If I represent it in this way, then this is two to the power of five times, five times two times seven plus one. Um, and so this is just to ex explain how the split works. Um, and to now we could also, you know, what we can do is here we say, hey, there's this, there's this seven here, right? So let's uh, do this. So this is um, uh, a new number. And now the clue is that we can also like iterate on the this process that we just did. So this happens to be an uneven number. So uh, this is two to the power of zero. This two times multiplication is power in Python. Um, times some uneven number, the uneven number is seven again, and we're going to split that into two times some y plus one. And what is the y that makes this work here? Well, this is the uh, three here, right? So you see how we can expand this process and suddenly get more like more x's, so to speak, right? This this was one x and this is another x, if you will. And we can like uh, in principle go on with that. And so um, I do the same thing here with uh, a little bit bigger number. Um, so 25 is an uneven number again. So this is uh, two, to, like according to this scheme, two to the power of zero. This is just to, to fulfill this kind of representation. Yeah? We have to give it an X, even if it's zero times. And then this is 24 plus one. Um, and then going on splitting 24 into parts it happens to be that 24 is eight times three. So we get two to the power of three times, and this is three. And then uh, as opposed to here, I actually now continue this to the bitter end and, and find out, well, three is two times two to the power of zero and one. So in the end, we see that the number 25 in this way, in this iterated way of splitting into even an uneven part where I iterate on the uneven part, I see that there's a co correspondence between 25 and this list uh, with natural number entries zero, three, zero, right? And the this number here is, um, this just happens to be a small number. So this this number is, is free here, but I could also go with, with that thing, right? So this, this list with here a huge number, okay? This would just correspond to to that number with not three, but actually like so, right? So this is some natural number, right? So there's this 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 natural number where after the second like at the second step, there's just a huge power of two, and that's why this second component go goes up. Um, but it's still a list with just three entries. And on the other hand, um, if the you know, if you take a random number, then the list could of course be longer than three entries. It could be seven, five thousand entries long. So this way we see suddenly we have this this relation between just the natural numbers and arbitrary long lists. Arbitrary long, but but uh, cut like uh, just f arbitrary high, but still finite. But the 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 values, the entries of the list. Uh, members are arbitrary natural numbers again, right? So this is going to be basically our main uh, tool. And we're going to see that if we implement that, it's, it's surprisingly simple and also relatively simple then to not like consider the special number two, but consider any number. And also I want to emphasize, I wrote a binary rep representation here to to uh, to contrast this, uh, you know, the 
you can also, of course, take any n number in, in decimals and write the, down the binary representation. This is also, you can see them as arbitrary but fixed uh, long lists. But there the entries are from an alphabet of just two different characters, zeros and ones, right? So this is another way of representing in a unique way the natural numbers. Um, but it's a, it's a different one than here. Um, so we see we, there's various, uh, basically all the countable objects that have, have some, some sort of representation in that sense. And in, in that way, the video uh, will also relate to um, countable ordinals. Although I will not go into depth with that much because I'm not actually going to consider the order much. Uh, and and you know, finally, I have here uh, another uh, constructed example given here some super long-ish natural number. I don't know, has probably 150 digits. And I find, well, this is also like, I, I think I extended this from, from this one here. Uh, this happens to be divisible, like this long number happens to be divisible by two, five times at first until you get to the first uneven number. Um, and then <laughs> this, I think this is the, I'm not sure what this comment is. Uh, I think this is the first Y, but not to confuse anybody, I will delete this for a moment here. Um, and then the, this is iterated on the Y uh, and uh, this number is huge because I like plugged in for the second number 40. So this Y happens to be, has this decomposition. This Y is some high power of two times some smaller uneven number. And I iterate on this and I get to 10 and then you know, I say, okay, I leave it at that. Up until this, this point, I have uh, five entries. And I, this actually, if I continue the expansion, if I say, I, I don't want, just want to do it to five, but actually go on, then I get a, a little bit bigger number there. Okay. Um, yeah. And here the, the final uh, note that this does not really depend on, on divisible by, by two. I could do also do it for other things. And that's also what we're going to implement. So uh, before I go to the, the related uh, internet pages and talk the, about the author of the paper a little bit, I just for the sake of it, I made a tiny um, demonstration of what you, like what this implies actually, which also relates to Gödel's theorems a little bit um, and uh, these matters. So what I have here, in this uh, in this uh, Python implementation that I just browsed through, there will be the implementation of this thing, right? This will going to be this function called uh, natural numbers, natural number to natural numbers. This is this function which maps some natural number to all the lists of natural numbers. Um, and what I do here, I have this this small printing custom function where you pass it three natural numbers and then it writes down, it computes basically how far off these numbers interpreted as, as two natural number inputs and an exponent M are away from uh, like solving uh, uh, Fermat's last theorem. So I, I write, uh, I take A and B, I, I multiply them uh, M number of times. So I take the power of M uh, and then I see how far off this would be from a solution to Fermat's last problem. This has nothing, this Fermat's last problem have, has of course nothing to do with the, the video really. This is just an example of an issue that needs three numbers. Um, and I, I use the function that, uh, that is implemented to, to split one number into three numbers in a projective fashion. And the, the cool thing about it is then that if I iterate if we want to iterate over all, uh, for example, all triples of natural numbers, I just need to iterate over uh, like the natural number values for, from one range, because I can just say for all n and then split this n into these different parts. And suddenly I, I turn it for all natural numbers into a, a succession of, of arbitrary long times uh, for all natural numbers. So, so what I want to say is that uh, you, with this device, with this computable function, you can write for all n and by an implementation actually have for all like arbitrary long pairs of natural numbers. For example, you can write for all natural numbers and then write down an equation that involves all matrices of, um, 
of natural number, like matrices with natural number entries and, and write down some propositions. So I'm going to show you what I, what I mean here in a practical example. So this function just prints this thing out, just computes uh, what is the rest and then, then makes a nice printing statement. And here I have this function, I choose uh, base two, although that's not necessary, any base will do. And then uh, I generate this, this list. I say, hey, if you are actually a list of uh, with three entries and not more or less, then uh, interpret them as A, B and M. And then if these are interesting numbers to me, then just make this, this printing statement. And if I actually, voila, so clear. If I actually execute this, what I will do is iterate for all the natural numbers. Uh, I mean, not all, I, I think I go to 10 million and uh, print all these this statements here. So, so, so here he now iterates through 10 million numbers and these numbers are, for example, here, seven, six, and three. And he writes on these equations and, and shows in every cases that, uh, indeed for mass last theorem holds, I will never get to, uh, a, a triple of numbers that matches this equation perfectly. So, um, from a logic perspective, what it means is that I just need uh, one universal uh, quantifier to also quantify over expressions where, in principle, one would need uh, several universal quantifiers. Okay, and before my system runs hot, I will abort this here. Voila. So let's see how that works. Okay, so um, yeah, so if you want to uh, get into the details beyond the code implementation that you will see, want to have more cues for why things work out so nicely, how that maybe relates to um, periodic numbers. Um, then you will have to look at the paper. I will basically, in most cases, just say it works because fundamental theorem of arithmetic, every number splits into uh, factors in a unique fashion. Um, and also, I'm really not reviewing the, the whole paper. This ends, uh, the thing that I'm going to talk about ends, I think, here on page three. And then he goes on to another bijection, another uh, even larger bijection of uh, between uh, natural numbers and, and pairs of them involving characteristic functions in, so, in some fashion, but I want to keep under an hour this video. So, okay. So, uh, here is uh, the guy, he has this huge list of publications. He has like 200 publications or so. Um, and I have, uh, you know, glimpsed and other, um, uh, publications of his. So in, if you read the CV, then he emphasized that he has, his sort of a mission statement. Um, at least for a few years of his life, apparently was to, to look at, um, data types in the, in the, um, computer science sense. So, so finite structures and investigate, uh, the relationship between them. And, and this paper is also in, in the vein, in the spirit of like considering, Hey, how do the data structure of the counting numbers and arbitrary lists of counting numbers relate. Um, and uh, he also happens to have this uh, this channel. I mean, it's not the super active channel. He has five videos on that. I uh, I don't know, but I think what he did is uh, he had some talk and then he was like, hey, um, take these five talks and put them up online, which I appreciate. Um, so then, uh, uh, on, on my videos, um, I have some videos which relate to what we are going to see in this video, what we saw so far, uh, in particular, um, it has to do with ordinals in that sense, it relates to my explicit, like scripting up of the, at the order relation corresponding to the ordinal, uh, Omega squared. Um, and also there is a paper where I, uh, basically give the projection um, between natural numbers and all the expressions 
in a finite alphabet um, language. So this is basically the, in a sense, generalization of the bijections that is the, for example, binary representation. Here we say, hey, I want this alphabet. I think I've been implemented with Python strings. I say, I want these characters and then generate all the strings and I say all the books in that sense. In that sense, it also relates and has uh, some Python implementations. And then I went on to do uh, power set operation, the thing that is necessary for uh, this kind of thing, then also in Idris and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, also, uh, whenever I uh, come to the part in the video where I talk about my own channel, please subscribe. Um, yeah. Okay, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. I will not talk about it too much, but do uh, you find again all this stuff in the links? This is basically the reason why this kind of thing works. Um, this is just Google. <laughs> uh, then there is a short site on uh, pairing functions. And I want to emphasize that under pairing functions, uh, people don't always understand bijections. Of course, in this video, uh, we speak of bijections. The most famous one is the Cantor pairing function. So, you know, what we saw in this video up so far was this split in even and uneven numbers. There happens to be another function which is uh, related to binomial coefficients um, that happens to be just quadratic. So there's no exponentiation going on there. This has some uh, advantages and disadvantages. I'm not going to talk about this this much. Um, and also not about the, the inverse, which is arguably a little bit uglier than what we will see later here in this video. Then uh, I, I like not going to go into Cantor much, but uh, you can Google this stuff up and there was this paper which um, gives the like it's 10, 15 pages or so, I think, on the details. And also there, there are some nice uh, generalizations. But again, I will not dwell on the Cantor function too much. Um, then mapping between natural numbers and sequences of natural numbers plays a major role in the uh, arithmetization of uh, logic that is used in the 1930 paper by Turing, uh, where he does diagonalization tricks and so on. Um, in that sense, uh, also relates to this video, what we just saw. Um, maybe here's some explicit uh, tricks Google uses. Well, uh, there's also another uh, Wikipedia page just on one of the uh, ingredients, that one of the theorems that uh, makes use of the Chinese remainder theorem that is used in, in uh, Google's papers. Um, but it's something different than what we're going to do in this video. Um, you might be interested in this article on the ordinal arithmetic, especially the exponentiation page. So uh, if you are interested in the ordering of objects related to what you just saw, then you can pause this video and read this, this short uh, paragraph, uh, this here, and if I scroll up that here, then you might Im immediately see how this relates. But again, uh, there are methods of ordering on on this this sort of this sort of tuples, uh, but I'm not going to discuss it here. But here you see, like, which goes even beyond the omega squared thing that I uh, talked about in the previous video, and also in the implementation for arbitrary base. So we talked about division by two, right? If you go to um, different base that relates uh, for especially for the prime numbers to the order. This will be an ingredient in the algorithm in the paper, as we will see, um, which relates in turn to the norm on the periodic number, which is another way that you can complete uh, numbers that is not like the real numbers. Okay. Um, you will see how to compute that, but, but I will obviously not talk about, uh, you know, short uh, short kind of things. Um, not going to talk about analysis at all. Um, okay, so uh, let's step through the code. I already uh, commented, I already ran through all the links, you find them in the, in the bottom. 
I start the script out by, uh, as I had done in other videos, uh, these tools which let you print in colors, which I recommend. I'm not going to explain that though. Um, and here, what I do here is, um, just for display's sake, I, I wrote a small, not super pretty function, but it does its job, which um, basically uh, you give it um, uh, any function. You know, this will be our inverse of the projection that we just saw. So this will be the function which takes two numbers and returns a natural number. And then I loop on uh, in the one dimension, in the y dimension to 12. You can, we can also change this. We can also go to 13 or anything. Um, and in the x dimension to 10. So we're going, we're going to build a matrix um, of this size, you know, roughly uh, 10 times 13. Um, and then we're just going to print it in a, in a neat kind of fashion. So we, we can actually see um, what the different pairs are mapped to and, and the other way around. Okay, so I, I'm not going to dwell on this function. This is straightforward, uh, making use of Python printing functionality and uh, like doing the line breaks and in the right point to make it actually look nice. Um, and then, you know, as a warm up before we go to the general case that that uh, abstracts away from the t number two, here is uh, exactly this uh, implementation of what I demonstrated at the beginning of this video. I uh, call it uh, two are the cons uh, because to some part um, I take the names that, that he uses here and he speaks about con you know cons is uh, when you uh, form lists um, and uh, two adic this is related to, like in case you are that's not your lingo lingo franca uh, relates to the base. Um, so what do we do, we do here? Okay, this is the, the inverse way, right? We take an X and Y and compute one number. We construct the uneven part, which was given by two times Y plus one. And the, the, the R, R is always my, my result of the computation. R is then the even part. And I could also call this E. The even part is this power uh, that the size is determined by X. And then I multiply. Um, and I get a natural number. Okay, and then I print it. I will here uh, uncomment this exit so it will stop at this point and we're going to see what comes out here. So if I run the script, hold on, this is a little bit too, okay, it, it works out, although uh, he breaks the line, so. <laughs> um, this is actually too, too broad. Let me actually reduce the number of of excess. This is just for displaying purposes. Okay, I will go to, let's say, seven. <laughs> let's see if that looks nice. Okay, this was the wrong dimension. Um, go here to nine. Okay, this is spot. God damn it. Obviously, like uh, when I present this video, then what uh, what you see is only uh, like one part of of my screen, right? So that's why uh, when I was coding it up, I had a little bit more display room. That's why I didn't think about making this smaller. God damn it! Why is this? This should be the Y dimension, and he doesn't even like. Goes to seven. Oh, sorry. I'm silly. I'm, I'm very inconsistent here. So this is the, the, the. Now I have it. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, so um, this is now here we we understand the the projection actually. Um, if x is zero, right, then 
these are just the numbers that are not at all divisible by uh, two from the start. So these are actually, by definition, the uneven numbers, right? So if x is, is zero, then this is one, uh, three, five, seven, nine, and so on and so forth. And now if we go with x once higher, then we get all the numbers which are divisible by two exactly once, right? So the numbers which are divisible by two exactly once are two, six, 10, uh, 14, and so on. So by the nature of it, what we have is that the first row is the uneven numbers and the second row is then just the uneven numbers and then each number just multiplied by two. And then the second, the third row is then each uneven number multiplied by, by two times two, so by four, and so on and so forth. And so you see how all the natural numbers by, by this bijection are put into a, a, a grid, right? So here we can really nicely see our one-on-one -one correspondence. It's kind of obvious because uh, sure, every um, every uh, natural number has an uneven part. For example, uh, seven. You know, uneven, even if the uneven part is just one. Uh, but in this case, for example, seven. And then, apart from the uneven part, then there's also a number of powers of two that are in that. And in this way, we obtain everything because the uneven part is exactly what remains if we kill out all the twos. <laughs> yeah, I'm just repeating myself here, but so this is how this looks like. And um, next up, uh, I'm going to show you then this counter function that I spoke about, right? This is a different bijection because it involves no, uh, no exponentiation, uh, but it happens that there is also this, this uh, just quadratic, it occurs quadratically in both x and y direction. Um, and it still works out that you can find a bijection. Um, and then there's, you know, there's then some theorems that really restrict uh, how much, how many bijections can there be, um, or different bijections of the of the form. Although I want to emphasize that once you have one bijection, then you can concatenate them, of course, and then you get another one. But okay. Um, so how did it, the, does that look like? Well, the, in uh, the counter function that I also like here quoted here is you 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 take this the pair like you, you sum x and y together and then square it effectively. You know you have this. Uh, plus, let's say p for plus x plus y, uh, and then you you multiply it by itself, shift that by one, uh, divided by two. By the way, if you see this sign, this is the uh, division um, into the into the integers, so there's no cannot be any any rest. So, for example, eight times uh, eight dot five divided by two would be four. If the rest is is killed uh, and you, you take the square and then um, you add x or y one of those and uh, so the interesting thing is here that this function again is just quadratic it doesn't have two to the power or, or some number to the power of an, an, another number right um, and this actually also then can be generalized in a way in a different way than what we saw before to, to the tuples. Actually, there's an explicit projection then between the natural numbers and the tu tuples of any uh, chosen uh, size. So this is another sort of um, map between uh, collections of natural numbers. Um, and that involves talk about binomial and so on. Here I implement a factorial function, a binomial function, just by hand to, to show you that this Cantor function can also be written as the sum of binomials and this is the way in which it generalizes. Well, look at the paper that I linked and don't want to talk about the counter function in this video. What I do here is just I, I demonstrate for some numbers uh, for the pair three and uh, two and three and for, for this pair that these two implementations, the quadratic, the explicitly quadratic one and then this binomial one, which is also it's the same polynomial, right? It's actually the same result. Um, and then what I do here is I, I I don't only verify that there's these two ways of writing down the counter function, counter parent function. I also print then this matrix. So let's have a look at that. I will shortly comment on it and then we are beyond uh, counter function. Okay, so um, this is this is uh, the this, uh, the second bijection that we we'll look at. This is the counter function, right? The, the above one, this was the, the power of two version. Um, this is this completely different um, bijection. 
and just to to like maybe understand it better um while the above uh, projection that we have previously looked at you know this is this one has the the feature that uh, we have a linear growth in the y direction right in the y direction this is this just goes like two times y plus one while in the x direction we have this exponential growth like for example here uh, this is 2 times 6, this is 2 times 12, and so on. It's exponentially in this, uh, along the, uh, the, the different rows. Um, the difference with the counter pairing function is that this is essentially quadratic in both directions, right? So none of them is linear, but on the other hand, none of them is exponential either. So roughly, as you can understand it, is that Basically, um, like if you take the counter function and set x and y the same, right? Then uh, you get some polynomial which has to be quadratic. Um, because then, you know, p, that p that we saw before is just too, too we can do it explicitly. So this was the, the function. If x and y is the same thing, then p is just 2x. And then r is just um, basically, Basically, it's just x squared, uh, two times x squared, plus something, right? The, the leading term is quadratic, and then some some uh, plus minus, some some uh, linear term that is off from that. So, uh, what this just thinking about this says is that if you go along the diagonal, which is where um, where x is y, then roughly these numbers are x squared. So, for example, if we look at four. Uh, 4 squared is um, four, 4 squared is 16 <laughs> and so this is something which is, is, is roughly there right so obviously this is um, uh, this is in, in the computation like in the order sense as you know it maybe from compu computation and complexity theory right you the, uh, it is not exactly uh, the square, but it's, it's, it's some polynomial. It's a square poly poly polynomial plus some linear term. The error will go linearly uh, bigger as you go out, but it, does, it doesn't blow up exponentially. And so if you look at uh, this number here, then um, in this box uh, that are up to here, like in this, uh, like the rows and the columns up to four, there are a bunch of numbers and all these numbers are a little bit uh, smaller than 14 in this case, for example, okay? And, but then uh, there are some other numbers which are not in this box, but also smaller. So for example, here, uh, 26, uh, and they are also like on, on they, they kind of ex escape the box. But as soon as you go further out, right? As soon as, 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 you, as you, if you think about the diagonal going like this, as soon as you go further out, then, then everything is, is, is bigger than this. So, okay, this is maybe like a very coarse description, but it's basically trying to put everything that's smaller than the diagonal into the box. And then there are some, uh, some numbers on the, on the, uh, on the, on the outer wings, let's say. So this is a completely different, uh, way of, of bijection than here, because here, you know, here we have this, this exponential growth in this direction and the just linear growth. So this is very like scoot. It's not like the counter function, which is, uh, it's up to a linear term symmetric, right? The counter function is uh, symmetric in this P, but then there is, is some bias here in that we, for example, choose Y and not X, um, which is but arbitrary though. Now, which direction you prefer, if you can switch the whole thing, but, um, okay. So this is uh, to, just to get a feel of how this projection look like. This is like trying to squeeze everything in this, uh, like find a quadratic function that, that, that does the job. It's surprising at all that this exists anyway, right? But okay, so much for that. Um, okay, and now we're going to do the uh, implementation of the, the exponential case, but not for two, but for generally, for general B. So I, I, I uh, say B like base, which is reminiscent of the binary representation and so on. I already see, by the way, that 40 minutes was a uh, bad guess. Probably taken an hour again, but so be it. Um, okay, so 
first we define the the order function, which is basically quotes and quotes the logarithm. It takes the 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 power. Like for example, if we have the number twenty, the number twenty would be uh, two times two times five, right? Um, and so there is the this is two to the power of two times five, and the I, I say log in the sense that it gets the exponent down. So um, this is the 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 the, the highest. Um, I mean, maybe I can actually look at the order here. So no. Yeah. Okay. So the biological. Let me let me like just read it to you. In number theory, given a, in this case prime numbers, uh, the periodic order p uh, or periodic valuation and valuation is also how he calls it in the paper uh, of a non-zero integer n is the highest exponent such that. Uh, p to the power of uh, of uh, nu divides n, right? So even if uh, n is not uh, like a perfect exponent of of uh, of, of p, so for example, um, t t uh, twenty is not a perfect power of two. We're still interested in the in uh, like what is the exponent of the of this base two, right? And then um, in in number theory and um, periodic analysis. This is then also used then to define uh, the the metric um, on this set. But okay, this is totally beside the point. The, the implementation the implementation accordingly is then is very simple, right? So um, this function is defined recursive, and we're going to look at the the function and see if is there a power there, and if yes, then we get uh, plus one and divide one out and uh, iterate on this. So, so for example, given uh, the number 20 and we're interested in powers uh, of two in it, um, we, uh, we see he is uh, the, is the number, uh, a multiple of the, the, the base that we're interested in, for example, um, the number uh, 20 would be a multiple of two. So um, we would return one. So there's at least one factor in because we can multiply it by two. And then if we multiply it by two, this is what's done here. Then we're left with 10 and then we repeat the process. And then we say, hey, is 10 a multiple of two? Yes, it's still one. We can uh, then iterate on this, uh, divide it out again. So we have four. We're left with five, and hey, is five a multiple of two? No, it's not. So we turn uh, zero, and then one plus one plus zero is two, so we get the, the order. We, we have taken the log, so to speak. Okay, so that's how that works. And um, then this, this splitting of the number, and you know, I, I took the example two, but this works with any base, obviously. There, there was nothing special about two here. Um, the uh, the function that now takes a natural number and and tries to get out this this x the x is just the order that we just computed and then um, what has to be done is to to like in the, the, the uneven part in the in the uh, base two example was two times this number plus one and now this has to be generalized in some fashion right and it happens that uh, this this works out. And the algorithm goes like like so. So first you take the, the you find the power of the base that you're interested in. This is just the OR function that we just implemented. Okay. Then naturally you take this n and divide out this. Like for example, uh, in that in those examples, uh, let's take this for example. So here we would have to divide out uh, all powers of two. So we would divide out. We would first compute the order. The order is, is five uh, for base two anyway, then we divide it out. We take this number, divide out two to the, to the power of um, five. Then we are left to, with, with this object. And then we have to query the this, this y parameter out of it, right? So um, yeah, so we divide it out. We, we, we get some y. This is not yet the y that we are interested in because now it's it's not not uneven like it's not uneven numbers anymore. It's like something more complicated. It's not just every second uh, number. Um, 
what we're interested in is the plus one uh the, the plus one was this this sort of remainder object that is not generalized uh, uh to this so we take this number we 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 compute the, the what the what the difference is between the basically the new previously we had these grid points every second uh entry was an an uh, uneven number this is what our grid is just two and now we have these blocks uh where for example with the base three um uh, every not second but third point is is one that that matches exactly but then there's two where there's remainder remainder one and remainder two and so we have to compute this and you will see in a second how this turns out and in, in the in the matrix grid again but in this way is clearly the the way to to uh to split off the the, the remainder from the the full, full multiple um because this is the uh, yeah okay i mean the, i i do i do you know like ha have to f have a feeling for that or not if not then you know j just try out what you have to do in pen and paper um but uh don't want to like uh, sit too long on it um and then yeah by the way if you read this this pa uh, for example the paper paper by um paul uh turan and also the literature there's always a discussion of uh whether or not um you take the zero as natural number or not and so on and so forth and often these these projections naturally come in the one or the other or mix one or the other so there's often plus minus one things in this case i explicitly make a line for that to emphasize that here happens this one subtraction um and then uh in any case you get the 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 y um and in the other uh, way around, sadly also not not as straightforward. Um, as the, obviously the thing collapses in the case of uh, power of two because then you have really this nicely spaced grid, grid of even, uneven, even, uneven. And, but here we have to, to make some space. Uh, you will see in a second what I mean when, when we look at the matrix. Uh, the inverse of this whole thing looks like so. Um, here you see, for example, that if B is two, then this is just one and the division by one is identity so then this whole thing reduces but um basically the thing looks like that uh this is literally just copy pasted from the the paper by the way so you can hear read us description also here but this is in haskell um and then yeah I, then i also i have this this uh test of this function now here so you plug in two numbers you compute this r and then you uh i do the the inverse and then i check hey are these uh components in the x and the y actually the same thing that i input so i test if the function works and of course it works um and then i used again this pairing matrix right and so let me do that for the two again so if we run this now then okay the tests are true okay uh, here are also some examples, I think, you know, which like I, I fear these numbers 10 and 20 or uh, 49 and 33, and they are mapped to some natural numbers. And uh, they are, of course, not, not really small. They are these numbers. And, uh, but in any case, the, um, the tests are true. And then we have this, the, the matrix, and this happens to be exactly what we saw before already, right? So we can see that the, the entry x equals nine, y equals seven is 7,680. And this happens to be the same uh, as here, right? Yeah. So, okay. Um, then we might want to do the same for base three, right? The, 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 the algorithm also works for base three or for example, let's just do both, uh, base five. Um, and then we will see what is different here. Let me clear this actually. So, uh, okay. So this uh, this number get too long, but you, you must imagine this number being here and this number being here, and just squeeze them. Ah, just squeeze can squeeze them together. That's, uh, so, so that that's what I mean here. They're shifted off just because the 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 numbers get too long for the tab. But okay, so. Here is the space two case that we already know, and here is then the base three case. And what do we see here? So, 
Um, while in the base two case, you now if the x is power of zero, then these were just the uneven numbers, right? So these were all numbers which didn't have uh, two in it. The same principle applies here as well. So that the, the x equals zero are have no power of three in them. So these are all the numbers that don't have a three in it, them. So this is one, two, and then three is skipped, and then uh, four and five. So here we see this is a this is basically if you if you think of the national numbers as a grid, then every third um, entry is removed. So three is removed, six is removed, and so on and so forth. And, and it, it is more complicated than the thing before because it's not just uh, evenly spaced. Uh, you know, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. When it comes to whether or not the numbers are even, but instead it's no, no, yes, no, no, yeah, yes, no, no, yes, where uh, yes means multiple of three. Um, and that's what this the whole remainder game. You always like get two of them, which, which have a remainder when you divide by three. Um, and, but it, uh, then how to get to the next row where it's the same spiel. You take the first row and multiply it by three ones. So one gets to three, two gets to six, uh, four gets to 12 and so on. And then the next one is uh, multiplied by three times three, so by nine. One gets to nine, two gets to eighteen, and, and so. On. And and by the fundamental theorem of, of arithmetic, this uh, un unique split into all natural numbers into pairs of natural numbers, isn't that nice? And here, one, two, three, four, and then five is skipped, six, and so on and so forth. Like if you go it from that angle, it's, it's actually obvious, <laughs> like that you can split the natural numbers into. Uh, into these parts which and then have your projection between natural numbers and pairs of natural numbers um, okay so far so good so and then uh, lastly uh, we are just going to implement the process um, iteratively as as I already did by hand at the beginning of this video right so um, I mean I guess you get the gist of it right so you have this natural number um, you use the, the n adding adding decons. So this is the function that we have implemented here, uh, the first one, here, this one, which take a natural number, return x, y. Um, it does that. Then this is a pair, x and y. You return the x and uh, for the y, the y is, is called t for tail. You like iteratively um, do this again, right? And if the, the number, like you, you t always take the tail of what, what is the rest. And if the tail is zero, so if n equals zero, then you don't do that. And I could also write if it's bigger than zero, but this is Python just shorter. Then uh, you return the empty list. So there, if the, once it's zero, there's no, no contribution anymore. Basically, this is, if I go back to the beginning, this is when you here, now you get the y and First you get the x and then you have the y and then from the y you get the x2, this is 40, and then you get the y2 and then from this you get a 3 and then another one, da, 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 da. I stopped at 100 here, but if you go uh, you know, down the rabbit hole, eventually um, you will get to 4, 3, 1, 0, um, you know, for example, uh, 4 would be 2 to the power of 2 times two times zero plus one. So this is the end there. Uh, the last number being uh, two. And if the last number is, is uh, I mean, you get the gist of it, right? You just, you have to, you have seen the code. You, you do it iteratively until uh, nothing is left anymore. This process obviously like goes uh, slower and slower. That's why it will, uh, smaller and smaller. That's why it will terminate. Um, and that's that. And then the, the, the other direction is, is also simple. The other direction is you take the list. If the list is not empty, then you um, uh, you take you take the first entry from the list and the rest, and you apply uh, the function iteratively to the rest and to the the the. Yeah, I should call this tails because, uh, well, yeah, 
Uh, and then the, the, the first number that you, you, you didn't throw into the iterative process, you um, take as the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is this is the result of the iterative process, right? So you again you you, you get the list, you get the first uh, entry, the head of the list, and the rest. The head is your uh, is going to be the the x from this iteration, and the rest is going to be worked on iteratively again. And once the iterative process for this y uh, returns a result, you take them and, and plug them together, right? And so and this, is fun this is done iteratively. Um, yeah, and, and similarly, once you have the empty list, then there's no contribution anymore. And you, then you can return the, the zero and then the whole thing will return. And I, um, I give some examples, so let's evaluate this. Okay. So, okay, what I do here is um, I go with n from 0 to 35, then these numbers from 0 to 35, and I look at the result of these lists of uh, natural numbers in base 2 and 3. And the, the base 2 I, I plot in green and the base 3 I plot in red. And so we see, for example, um, 0, then you know if it already terminates and you get the empty lists. Um, these all look similar, but okay, let's actually go to, for example, the number 16. Number 16 in, in base um, 2 is 2 to the power 4, so that happens also to terminate very quickly. This is just a list containing the 4. While in with the um, p equals three, you know you see, okay, uh, you know I would have to think about what this is, but uh, I mean here's the result, right? Uh, apparently, uh, sixteen is is not divisible by three. That uh, makes sense, uh, but um, and then you can you have to split it off according to the algorithm and. Uh, if you do that, you get to the, the insight that 16 corresponds to this list with 0, 0, 1, 0, right? Um, I suppose you can also, s we, we might be able to read it out from the grid uh, in some fashion for the first iteration. So this is base 3. The number 16 is uh, so a bad example because it's not divisible by 3, so it's somewhere here. Let's actually go to one which is a little bit... So 22 in, no, yeah, 24 is 3, 0, or 1, 0, 1. Okay, Let, hopefully remember that. 24, let's first go to base 2. Um, is here in the third uh, column because it's, it's 8 times 3. Right. Um, so it's three, and then two to the power three. So it's three rows down. Okay, this is this case. While in the um, in the case with base three, it's it starts with like it's it has a factor of three, right? It's divided divisible by three, so it's in in the, this row one, then. What we are left with is eight, um, which is not divisible by, by oh, that's too complicated for me in my head. <laughs> uh, but okay, you, you in principle you can could not jump ar ar around on on the grid, right? But you would have to iterate it and you keep that in your head. Uh, I promise it all makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, but I guess the logic is clear, right? The, you you just take the order as 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 the axis and you iterate it and you get a bunch of axes. Um, okay, here then I, I test it a couple of times, like I uh, have this process where I take a natural number, I, I, I print it to a list and then I go in the other direction and ch check if it's still the, the right number. Um, and here this is in the other way around, where you put a list in and uh, go to a number and back. And if we run that, of course, because we will see everything is, is fine, I even print this. So what do I do here actually? What do I print here? Da, da, da. Let's actually let's actually uh, 
print the natural number n okay so we see that the what is the color here oh, okay this some uh, okay it prints it as well in yeah This is just for me to find it. I'm, I'm a little, little bit surprised that he prints it in white, even though I don't specify white here. This must be, well, so be it. <laughs> um, so here we see, for example, that the number 2012 uh, is mapped to, to this expression. I have 2012 here because I think um, he wrote it in 2012 and he gives this example here as well. So again, this is really, I, I just directly translated this Haskell code to Python. That's why it's just exactly the same, even the examples I stole. Um, and yeah, that's basically it, right? So uh, I can go back to this example, right? Um, printing the <laughs> first hundred million no uh, numbers uh, translated into base five. Um, Problem is if I go uh, on with the base, then it might take longer actually because then it will. It goes in one or the other direction. I will uh, let's go with base three. Uh, Ten million numbers. Uh, go back to to print this. These examples, of, you know, t I go through all these numbers and I, I make lists out of them in the same process that I now described in some detail, um, and this way I can iterate over just one number, like one slot of numbers. And actually, imp like behind the curtains, iterate through lists of all, all numbers, which is really fancy. The problem is that if you t take these higher uh, powers, then the, he will go for uh, obviously different uh, lists, and it might take longer to find uh, things that are of interest to me because I, I fuck, like I remove some uh, numbers that are not so interesting for this Fermat's problem thing. Okay. Uh, I keep talking. Um, I think I will leave it at that. I hope that was not too long-ish. You know, I could uh, I could uh, be more like be more like um, infotainment. But I suppose there there's going to be one like this one guy in five years some Indian kid who is really interested in that and wants to see the details and we can get to this video <laughs> and see a little bit more than you would have um, if I would just make infotainment videos. Um, if you're that Indian kid in five years in uh, 2025, then please leave a comment. <laughs> okay, and we see some numbers coming in here. Yeah, um, that's it for the video. If you see that in, in the month in which I do it or even later, um, please uh, check out the links and go to this this guy's um, papers and and uh, find the ones on the finite sets and finite set theory and I think one is directly called hereditarily finite sets and I will go into that and this will come up in this channel uh, soon so check it out read it with me and we can discuss it take care.